Okay, one of the central concepts to chemical calculations is the concept of the mole. And no, I'm not referring to the furry brown animal. I'm referring to the way that we as chemists group particles or entities. So I've written here that the mole is a convenient grouping of entities since particles themselves are so incredibly small. So if you think of socks, what's a convenient way that we group socks? Hopefully you're thinking of a pair of socks, right? And the idea is that one pair of socks really means that there are two socks. So one pair, if you had a pair of cufflinks or a pair of students, there would be two students. So a pair means two. What about eggs? What's a convenient way that we group eggs? Sure, by the dozen. So when you hear dozen, you think 12. A dozen donuts, 12 donuts. Okay, what about printer paper? You know how you have a package of paper for a printer? It's wrapped in that paper like as an envelope. That's actually 500 sheets of paper and may not be sure what we call that group of 500, but that's considered one ream of paper. There's 500 sheets. Now when you get down into particles that are made of, for particles such as atoms, molecules, or formula units, it's actually not convenient to group them just in pairs, so two by two, or in the dozens, or even by a ream, because particles atoms, molecules, formula units, they're so small that you couldn't even see, let alone work with, in, a, in an experiment, 500 molecules. So we group entities, so when I say the word entities here, I'm really sort of a scientific word for things. Uh, entities is referring to the particles that the substance is made of. I can be very specific about entities and talk about atoms, molecules, or formula units. Anyway, so in general, a mole then is a convenient grouping of these entities or particles. What's the value? Well, they're not grouped by the dozen or by the ream in 500s. A mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles or entities. I'm just going to use the general word here. word here. We'll look at specific examples in a moment. So yes, incredibly, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Now, how large is that? Well, imagine the earth. Okay, so the earth and 250 planets, the size of earth, all covered in a one meter deep blanket of frozen peas. You know those small little green peas? So can you imagine a meter stick and having to try to walk on the sidewalk and you had to push yourself through one meter tall blanket of peas on the sidewalk. So one meter deep blanket of peas covering all of the earth's surface, land and water and 250 planets the size of Earth. That would be about one-sixth the amount in a mole. That's basically giving you an idea of how large times 10 to the 23 is. So the number of peas that it takes to cover 250 planets the size of Earth in a blanket of small little green peas, one meter deep, that gives you an idea of times 10 to the 23 incredibly large. Take a moment and try to write that out in standard form. So the value of what I've written in green in standard form is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 expanded. Isn't that an incredibly large number? Here's the ones position, tens, hundreds. Here we're looking at a hundred thousand. This is a million, a billion, and so on. So it's incredibly unimaginably large. And because particles are incredibly small, right, you, we would say that there's, in one mole of atoms, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. In one mole 
of a substance made of molecules, there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules, for example, water. In formula units, now we're talking about an ionic compound. One mole, again, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 formula units. So I have a photograph on the side here, right here, right here. This is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon, graphite. I've put a few Skittles beside it just so you can see an idea the size of the pile. But as incredibly large as that n number is, that's how small atoms are that we can actually fit in a pretty neat pile on a watch glass, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of carbon. And so that's one mole of carbon atoms. We call this value in honor of Amadeo Avogadro, Avogadro's constant. So you'll see I've used a symbol here, capital N with a lowercase a, and that Avogadro's constant is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So when you have one mole of anything, one mole of watermelons, one mole of people, you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 entities or whatever pieces of that substance. So in terms of terminology, I'm just emphasizing here that if the substance here is made of single atoms, so look at the formula, is it a single atom element? So carbon, there's really just a one there, right? So that will contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. If the substance is a molecular compound, then we use the term, instead of entities, we can be more specific, we use the term molecules. If the substance is an ionic compound, as sodium chloride is, then we use the term six point then we use the term formula units. So there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23 formula units. Okay. So that's basically the idea of a mole. It's basically the chemist dozen. So you, you go to the uh, donut shop, you want to buy um, some donuts for you and your friends, you order a dozen donuts. Well, it doesn't help a chemist to work with a dozen particles of water. They can't even see that, let alone put that in a graduate cylinder and measure it. And so scientists group particles by a much larger number and then because the particles are so incredibly small, that's actually not a large mass or volume to work with in an experiment. So now I'm asking you to connect some concepts that you've done already in the unit. So recall factor label method. And I'm asking you now to calculate the number of eggs in seven dozen eggs. Calculate the number of eggs. So this is what you're looking for, right? Starting with seven dozen. This is what you've been given. So set up factor label and answer this question. Okay, so you may have just figured out in your head even that there were 84 eggs and seven dozen. But again, I'm emphasizing the factor label method that you've already learned. So you'll see I listed the required on the left side of the equal sign and then the given. And I transferred the dozen unit to the bottom so that I could set it up to cancel. And then I converted dozens to eggs. So 12 eggs in one dozen, that makes sense. That's a true statement. 7 times 12 is 84. Dividing by 1 doesn't change that. So 84 eggs. Okay, so now transfer the same set of skills into example B here. Calculate the number of molecules in 7.0 moles of water. Okay, and so you'll see I've set up what's required on the left side here, looking for the number of molecules, beginning with 7.0 moles. I'll just comment that I'm dropping the E, and that's because when we write the unit of moles, we do drop the E. I know, incredible that molecules doesn't have a short form, but mole does. Just drop the E. So I copy the unit down, and I'm converting from moles to molecules. Well, it's not a dozen, it's one mole. So instead of having 12 molecules in one dozen, like we had for the eggs, now I have Avogadro's number of molecules in one mole. So when you go to punch this in on your calculator, 7.0, I'll just show you over here. 7.0 times 6.02 times 10 to the 
and then that exp or ee button that you have in your calculator then the exponent 23 and then the equal sign when you see your answer it's actually going on your calculator it's going to be 4.214 times 10 to the 24 but now look at sig figs here we're multiplying so we have two sig figs here and three sig figs because Avogadro's constant is experimentally determined so that's an experimental value so we have two sig figs versus three sig figs so we need to have two sig figs in our final answer and that's why this has been rounded looking at the one that was a low neighbor so we kept the two as we did so communication marks for the correct number of sig figs in the answer and for the unit make sure you're writing the unit there Okay, so we can convert from molecules to moles and moles to molecules, just always following the factor label method. We'll explore that more, a little bit in the homework, but a lot more in a, in a lesson to come. So in this last example, C, I'm asking you to solve a problem, so work at your problem-solving skills, incorporate factor label, and your concept understanding of the concept of a mole. So I'm telling you here that the Milky Way galaxy is about 1 times 10 to the 18 kilometers across. So that's the galaxy where our solar system is found. So if a burger, a hamburger, is 8 centimeters in diameter, how many burgers would fit side by side across the Milky Way galaxy? First, I want you to express your answer in burgers. So how many burgers? And then how many moles would that be? So. We have this broad, broad, broad galaxy, 1 times 10 to the 18 kilometers across. And I'm saying, what if you put burgers side by side from one end of the Milky Way galaxy to the other? How many burgers would that be? And then express that number of burgers in moles. So give it a shot. OK, so to solve this problem, I put what I was looking for on the left side, the number of burgers, and the distance across the Milky Way to start as given, 1 times 10 to the 18 kilometers. Ultimately, I need to convert kilometers to burgers. I do know that one burger is 8 centimeters in diameter. So if I can convert kilometers to centimeters, then I could relate centimeters to burgers, and that would get me to this unit. So that's my strategy. From kilometers, I convert to meters, because that's some defin a definition I know quite well. One kilometer, 1,000 meters. Then from meters to centimeters, 1 meter, 100 centimeters. Then from centimeters to burgers, 8 centimeters diameter for one burger. Now if I cancel kilometers, meters, centimeters, you'll see the unit I'm left with burgers, which is exactly what I was looking for. So factor label solves problems that you don't have formulas for, and really a multi-step problem can be quite neatly explained using this method. Line up my equal signs, and when I punch this into my calculator, 1 EXP 18 times 1,000 times 100 divided by 8. I'm really ignoring all the 1s because dividing by 1 for these or multiplying by 1 does not change the final answer. Now, one sig fig here. This is considered a definition, so is the 100 centimeters per meter. So these we don't look at. We ignore them as far as sig figs. This 8 centimeters was measured, but again, you know, only to one sig fig. And so we have one sig fig here, one sig fig here. So ultimately, I'm going to round this answer from my calculator to one significant figure. So the final answer, 1 times 10 to the 22 burgers. Now, that's part of the answer. I was asked to express in burgers, but then also in moles. So to find the number of moles, I'm going to go back to my answer from the first step. The number of burgers except instead of using the one that I rounded I'm going to take what my calculator had given me so we do that we don't round until the very final answer uh, to make our answer most accurate so I'm going to go back to this that my calculator told me you can see I've written it here and now set up burgers in the bottom and convert to moles Avogadro's number of burgers in one mole so the burger units cancel here and you'll see we're left with moles which is what we wanted in the first place okay so on my calculator I may still have in fact I did still have this answer sitting in my calculator so to save you some time on a test and your homework it really helps to 
Learn how to use your calculator efficiently. If this is still sitting in your calculator, then just press divide 6.02 EXP 23 equals. If it wasn't sitting in your calculator, then 1.25 EXP 22 divided by 6.02 EXP 23 equals. Round to one sig fig, because even though this one has three, and I wrote this one as three, remember that this answer, this value, came from this calculation, which originally was restricted by the one sig fig, both in the um, distance across the Milky Way, as well as the diameter of the burger. So one sig fig in the end, and we end up with 0 0.02 moles. So just to give you an idea, like hopefully this is helping you grasp the concept, that's really about 2% of a mole. 0 0.02, 2 over 100, that's really about 2% of a mole. So you can put hamburgers all the way across the Milky Way galaxy from one end to the other, and that would still only be about 2% of a mole. And yet, with water, when you take a sip of water, you've likely swallowed one mole of water particles. We'll be doing an activity in class in a couple days where you explore how large a mole is right in front of you. Final concept here is just a little bit of terminology and notation. We use the term amount in our daily lives and it can probably be measured in many different units. But very specifically in chemistry, amount of a substance is measured in moles. So when you're asked to determine the amount of a substance, they don't mean volume in liters or milliliters, they don't mean mass in grams, they mean moles. So amount of a substance is measured in moles. The symbol we use is N. So in other words, up here, we, instead of having this, I could have just written N. That would, that's supposed to tell you amount or number of moles. Okay, and so I have the symbol and the unit of MOL. For example, if I was just stating the number of moles of water as 3.5 moles, then I would use the symbol and a subscript H2O. So I read this, the amount of water equals or is 3.5 moles. So this is just an example of how to use the symbol and the unit correctly.